Hello everybody. The next plane off the pile is a Winchester W5 and a half. Let's take a look at it. This old beauty was made by Stanley. It's a the exact same plane as the Bedrock Type 3. It was made between 1908 and 1910. So there's not a lot of these out there. Stanley made them during those years and later on Sargent made them and they didn't have the uh, W number in front of them. I searched the internet for some information on these planes. I knew I've done several restorations on Winchesters and uh, the five and a half appears to be a quite uncommon plane. I couldn't find another example of a W five and a half. I found where one was auctioned off with an estimated value of hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars don't know what the final sale price was. And like most of the five and a half planes that Stanley made, it's corrugated. Pay attention to it when you see them on eBay. You don't very often ever see a flat bottom, flat bottom five and a half. They don't come along very often in the five and a half. In the 605 and a half, I haven't paid that much attention to them, so I don't know, but I'm guessing that they're not that common. This old plane doesn't appear to have had a lot of use if any at all but there are quite a few dings in the sides but it is in excellent overall condition and because it is a very uncommon plane I'm just going to clean it up not restore it so it's time to break it down so all the parts are there they're the appropriate parts for the Winchester plane off to a good start before I start cleaning this old beauty up, I wanted to point out one difference between the, the frogs. I didn't have a type 3 bedrock frog sitting around, but I had a, a five and a half frog for a later type. But here's the two sitting side by side, both made by Stanley for bedrocks. The one on the right is for the Winchester, and the big difference is the lateral adjustment lever. That lateral adjustment lever on the Winchester is identical to the laterals that were used on the uh, Union planes where the typical Stanley lateral looks like this one right here that's what you see in all the Stanley bench planes and there's the one on the Winchester so that's a big difference but other than that exact same angles constructions almost exactly the same and here's a look at the both of them from the underside the bottoms of the 605 and a half and the, the uh, Winchester 5 and a half are exactly the same except for the numbers and they don't have the patent date that you'd have on the bedrock planes but other than that they're pretty much identical. First thing I'm going to do is clean up the bottom and the frog. A little simple green and a toothbrush, scrub them down, rinse them off, blow it off with some air. So after scrubbing the base in the frog, I see I've got nearly 100% Japanning. That's great. There's one thing that I got to point out. I got to zoom in on it, see if we can see it. Right there. I've commented many times in the past about paint on planes. Hardly ever find one that doesn't have it. It's usually white. Well, pleasantly surprised to see I do have paint on this plane, and it's a beautiful robin egg blue, just one little speck. But that have reminded me of. A group of five planes or so that I bought at auction several months back did a video on a Stanley number no. one so if you haven't seen it you got to go back and look at it this is one of the planes that was in that auction painted with a beautiful robin egg blue it went over the entire body of the plane in the wood and underneath that it was at least four more coats of paint I figure what the colors were but all five planes have done that way a number one a number two a number 40, a number four and a half, I don't remember what the other one was. But beautiful paint. I'm kidding. As you can see this old number two is a beauty. That depth adjustment knob has been modified for reasons unknown to me. But the bones are there so someday I'll get to it. And that's got it looking really good. Next thing I'm going to do is take a dental pick and go over and pick off the little things like that little piece of robin egg blue. And with that done, it's on some 3 odd steel wool to clean up the Japan surfaces. A light rubbing all over. It's going to dull it a little bit, but don't worry, we're going to take care of that later on. If your sandpaper on a stick is cut thin enough, 
you can use it to clean up the front edge of the throat. And there's how the Japani looks after going over it with the 3 aught steel wool. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use steel wool and a sanding sponge, not in that order. And I'm going to use it on the bottom of the frog and the top of the frog. I don't want to remove that Japani that's on there, that's original. And in just a matter of a minute or two they're looking really good both the top and the bottom. But attention to detail shows that this little piece of machine surface right here is still dirty. You can run the dental pick in the corner and then use the sanding stick and some steel wool to finish cleaning it up. You can also hit it with a software brush just don't get too aggressive. It doesn't hurt the japanning and here's what it looks like after being cleaned up. I did a detailed video on frog restorations so that's why I don't go into a lot of detail here. I use some steel wool on the lateral and I'm going to take and do that uh, depth adjustment bolt right there. I'm going to hit it on my wire wheel with some power and then uh, wire brush and that will be done. With that cleaned up the only surface left to do is right here where the frog adjustment plate goes. I'm going to use my sandpaper on a stick, the small wire brush and some steel wool. Now I want to finish up the machine surfaces on the bottom. As you can see there's some little nicks and dings all over the place. But this is original and I don't want to lap it. I mean I could lap it and make it look like new but then it loses its originality. So I'm going to hit it first with the sanding sponge see what it looks like. And that's all the flat surfaces. The sides, the bottom and the, the edges, the top edges of the sides. So I used the wire brush and the corrugations along with the uh, sanding sponge and steel wool. Bottom looks good. The sides have cleaned up but all those little dings are still really prominent. They're not going to go away. What I'm going to try to do is hit them lightly with some 3000 grit paper and see if it helps at all. So I think the 3000 grit made a little bit of a difference. There's the bottom. Here's what the sides look like. I've opted to not make them look perfect, not going to lap them. Now I'm going to completely coat the frog in the bottom with my dirty oil rag. My old dirty oil rag works so well on planes, I'm thinking about using it on my face. It'll probably make me look at least 20 years younger. I'm going to let those parts sit and use the sanding sponge and some 3 out steel wool on the tote and knob. It's going to be light. This has got what looks like good lacquer on it. I just want to clean them up. So a light once over with a sanding sponge followed by some steel wool and a couple coats of paste wax tote and knob are done. There's the paste wax that I use. And next is lever cap. The things I'm going to use is the sanding sponge, steel wool and a uh, wire brush. And it only took a couple minutes to get this old lever cap to look really good. There is, however, one more thing I want to do before I put the dirty oil on it. I said I wasn't going to restore this plane, but I'm not happy with the red around the Winchester, so that part I'm going to redo. It only takes a couple minutes to tape it off and give it a new coat of red paint. And while it dries, I'm going to clean up the cap iron and the iron. Those are the basic tools I'm going to use. In my other videos on the cap iron and the iron, I showed you in great detail how to go ahead and clean up and restore these things. This is just going to be a clean up. I want to get the uh, dirt and grime off, but not change them too much. And it wasn't hard at all to get the minor rust and a little bit of dirt off of these things. If I was going to do a restoration, the cap iron, I would have re -blued it. And both the cap iron and the iron on the flat sides where the bluing is not, I would have lapped them down. Could have made them look like brand new, but that's not the idea with this plane. One, it's in excellent condition when I started. I want to have it remain pretty much the same. There's a look at the front side. While I was doing that, the paint dried really quick on the lever cap, so it's ready to go. Next thing to do is sharpen the iron, and uh, I've got a really good video that shows you how to do that. The first step in the sharpening process was to take it over to my lapping station and get enough of that top side flat to get a good edge. Somebody in the future if they're going to make a user out of this got a little bit more to do 
because when you take off about another oh almost a quarter inch you're going to be into some shallow pitting that'll have to be lapped out otherwise this is going to be a really good iron and after that I set the 25 degree bevel get that initial edge on the iron then I move over to where I do the sharpening and I'm going to go 1000, 3000, 5000, 7000 grit paper and it should be ready to go and with all the papers done I've got a really nice looking razor sharp iron there's the cutting edge and there's a look at the back side looking forward to test driving this one and now that those parts are done they're going to get a good coating with my dirty oil rag and that means all I've got left to clean up is the small parts this is what they look like before and this is what they look like after cleaned up and lubricated ready to be put back together all I got left to do is wipe the dirty oil off and put a coat of wax on all the parts and here's what she looks like after all the parts have been waxed looking just flat out beautiful the next thing to do is put this old plane back together and at 108 years old this old W5 and a half is right up there with Erica Kane as far as it goes is aging well just take a look at that beauty she cleaned up really nice there's only one thing left to do and that's give her a test drive I bet you Erica Kane can't do this nice whiskey fine shavings Another plane that performs perfect. This one passes the test. And there is a look at the one thousandths of an inch shavings that this old plane just produced. She's all cleaned up and ready for her new home. Well I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this old uncommon Winchester plane. I'm pretty safe in saying I believe that it's probably the only video of a Winchester W5.5 on the internet. Not a whole lot of them out there. Well, that's it for this one. Gotta look for the pile, see what's next. Because we know what time it is. Time for supper. Bye.